Guys, do you own one of this? It's called Reduce 40 ounce. I like it because you fill it, you take it to a gig, and you don't have to worry about water for a while. Plus it's black, so it kind of disappears in the stage. But that's not the main reason I brought you here today. It's because a lady yesterday at a gig, she looked at me in the eye and asked me this question. What else do you do? This is the most annoying question that I get. And I said, uh, that's it, I music and I babysit my children. And she, she said, oh, well, your wife must have a nice job. And without losing my composure, I, I said, if you're trying to ask me if I'm able to survive, to make a living with this, well, the answer is yes, I'm able to make a living with this. I mean, I shouldn't get annoyed because people are gonna ask this and they don't, they don't mean to offend you. They genuinely think that you're unable to survive as a musician. So let's talk about how to make music your only job. So the first thing is go to all the venues in your area that have live music and talk to the owner or manager. Try to go at a time where it's not so busy. That's always better. Otherwise, they're not, they're not even gonna listen to you or talk to you. Give them your business card, tell them what you do. Offer the opportunity to show up and do like a half an hour gig. 30 minutes is more than enough to get them going. You make a little comment like, Hey guys, hopefully I can be playing here soon. And uh, hopefully you'll get a spot at that place. Also, you can try to go to venues, even if they don't have live music, you can still introduce yourself. Maybe give them the idea to try live music and see how it works. Don't try to call venues or email venues. I found this to not work. There's nothing like looking at the manager or the owner in person. That's always way better. Also, you're gonna need a and equipment. Most venues don't really have a PA, so every musician has to carry their own. So try to find a PA that is good for your needs. If you have a band, then you may need something bigger. I also suggest you get a little card so you can easily get your stuff in and out of the venue. And here is one of the most important things I will say in this video. There is no room for laziness in this career. And to be honest, in any career, I was at a venue, I was gonna play, there was a musician playing, so I was waiting for him to finish. I noticed there was dripping from his shorts. Uh, no, he didn't pee himself. He had gone, in his break, he had gone to the ocean, which is like one block from where we play. And, and, and he came back, he was dripping water all over the stage. <laughs> it's funny because you don't get to see a, a, a guy playing uh, a gig in his bathing suit. He didn't get any of the crowd going, nobody was paying attention, just playing chords, strumming some chords, and then when he packed up, he was done. He was gone in like one minute because he only had one amplifier and the guitar, and that's it. I make sure to bring everything I need. I'm a live looper, so I bring a loop station. I like the look of a stage lit up and there's no lights at this venue. So I bring my own lights. I put them behind me, I put them in front of me. I bring all kinds of percussion to record it. So I just have so much stuff. And sometimes it may look like it's too much. Do I really need this? And the answer is yes, I need all of it. It takes me three to four trips to my car. It takes me 45 minutes to set up. 50 minutes or an hour to break down at the end of the gig, I'm a little extra tired, so it takes me longer. If I was lazy, I don't think I would have as many gigs as I have. You have to go the extra mile to do every anything you do. Here's another tip. When you are performing, you are your own marketing guy, okay? Or girl. There's not someone else who's gonna come and talk and say, this guy is great, he plays private events. You have to make sure you tell the crowd the things that or any other company would say about their company. Every time you go on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, you're blasted by all these marketing campaigns. Oh, you gotta drink this beer. This product tastes great. Remember, you are basically your own company. So sell yourself. And I found ways to, to do it so it's not annoying to the, to the people. I wanna believe it's not annoying because when I use these techniques, I get a laugh. Basically make it a joke like, what was that question back there? Do I do private events? Oh, wow, 
That is a great question. Things like this where you combine humor, it works great. And make sure you also mention that you have business cards. A lot of people don't know if you do, if you have or not, and they'll be shy to come to the stage. Maybe eventually one of those people will hire you. Most of my private events come from people who grab one of my cards or are friends from people who grab one of my cards. So another tip is to always be professional. I, I think I, this goes without saying, being on time, you know, being well dressed accordingly to the to the type of venue you're playing. I think those are great things to secure your spot at that venue. Be reliable. That's it. Honor your gigs. If they hire you to play there, don't call 30 minutes before and tell them, hey, guys, I have a better offer. I won't be able to be there. Never do this because very quickly you'll be known as the person who doesn't honor their gigs. They, they know they can rely on me. I'll be there. You know, I've been sick and I'm still there. Try to give them enough advance if you do get another inquiry for another performance. Another tip is to always treat the staff with respect. Once you start joking around and it's very easy to cross a line where there could be a misunderstanding. At the end, even though it's fun to play music, it's still a job. That's another reason why I don't drink at my gig anymore. I did at some point a while back. Uh, only to find that it's just best to treat your job with respect. The way I see it is, if there are all these jobs that don't allow drinking, there must be a reason why. In my opinion, when you are performing, you need your full mental and physical capacities to be able to provide the best performance. If you add alcohol to your system or any, any drugs, this is not gonna be beneficial. It may seem or feel like it to yourself in the moment. There's always gonna be a musician who thinks the opposite. And I actually know people in town who, who are heavy drinkers when they perform and they're actually great. They do a great show. So I guess it's different for each musician. Do what you think is best. And then the other aspect of being a musician, the stuff that no one sees, the stuff we do during the day, This was an advice from a very successful accountant that I know. I asked her, how do you keep track of so many uh, numbers, you know, so many things to do when you are an accountant? She told me I have a bunch of legal pads and I write everything there. And just to clarify, I said legal pads, not maxi pads. I wouldn't even know how to write in these things. And there's a reason why she does this, because you can keep all your stuff from previous months, years, it's all in the same place. So if you remember that one day you were talking about something with someone and you wrote it down, you can always find it right there. It's easier to find. Observe those who are successful and take the best from what they do and implement it into what you do. Now I have different paths for different things. One is, let's say one is for my video ideas, one is for the things to do for my music business. So things we do during the day, things like edit a video for my YouTube channel, clean my pedal board, make invoices. One of the venues where I play regularly, they require an invoice, that way I can get paid every week. There's a bunch of stuff that we have to keep track, like make contracts, call back people, uh, respond to emails. I have to make a schedule for next month. When I make a schedule for my social media, I like to have my own unique picture instead of just finding something online and then use this in Photoshop and add all my performances for the month so people can access that. But I do implement in my website a Google Calendar. So if for some reason I'm unable to deliver a schedule on time, then they can still see a Google Calendar in the homepage of my website. So those are just some tips to make music your main job is doable. I've been doing it for many years. You'll find success in anything you do when you're 100% committed. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Let me know in the comments what are the things you do to make music your full-time job. Goodbye.